Okay. Okay, so uh, last week we discussed about interesting topics, but I would like some of you, the participants of the last lesson, to say something about last week. Sara, what was the topic of last week? Of uh, last week? Uh, yes, uh, we talking about uh, women and the, the, Scarlet, the Scarlet uh, the letter mm -hmm. and uh, the the women uh, who uh, have uh, uh, courage and uh, who uh, was brave to defend uh, herself and uh, her lover and uh, for example her daughter and uh, the the women who uh, want uh, to put uh, uh, love uh, in uh, Davanti. Yes, love at the top, like as the first at most the top important of, thing. Uh, of, yes. the, of uh, the life. We spoke about the stigmas, right? The stereotypes, things that are used to judge women. So we spoke about ethical dilemmas, we spoke about morality, so interesting topics. I hope that this uh, third meeting would be as interesting as the last one. And we are going to speak. Can you see my screen? First of all, let's check for yeah. anything. Okay. Yes. So, uh, what can you see in the pictures? Lara, how would you describe these photos? Uh, I see uh, ginger people, uh, people okay. with uh, red eyes. Mm -hmm. the red eyes, yes, yes. sorry. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, here's a joke. Okay. So, First of all, there is a title. Is genderism as bad as racism? Do you know what is genderism? Because it is a new term. It hasn't always existed. Any ideas about the meaning of genderism? Comes from ginger, so the color. And usually when you have this suffix like racism, romanticism, you have this suffix that explains a concept, a movement. So in this case, genderism is the racism towards people that have red hair, okay? okay. So it is a form of prejudice, a form of racism. And for some people, genderism is as bad as racism. Maybe it is not typical here in our, uh, in our uh, country because this is not a typical feature we have, right? It is not common to find people with red hair, but in different countries, especially Scotland, Ireland, and places okay, where this is uh, a typical feature in physical appearance, genderism is a real issue. We have a lot of children uh, who are bullied in schools because of the color of the hair. We have a lot of people who are outcast of the society, excluded, isolated because the family has this important trait. Do you believe it? Can you believe it? I didn't know that this uh, know. kind of racism or uh, prejudice uh, now in, in the hour uh, the time, mm -hmm. in the past, uh, in the Middle Age, yes, middle age. The, the, the women with uh, red hair mm -hmm. uh, were um, Considered, considered, uh, considered. Uh, witches. Yes. Yes. But now I. You are surprised. Never, you never. Are surprised. Yes. Okay, uh, Elena. What about you? It's a discovery for me too. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that uh, people with the red hair are very beautiful. So it's uh, yes. impossible for me yes. to think that uh, it's a uh, uh, reason for for racism. Okay. Yeah. So this is the reason why I selected for you a terrible joke. I completely disagree. I want to keep distance okay, with this joke, but this is just to introduce to you the topic. So do you know what is a punchline? No, no. <laughs> Any ideas? A okay. powerful uh, sentence. So. Yes, okay. Usually it is associated with uh, interesting and very quick sentence, okay, that makes other people laugh. So here's the joke. What's the difference between a terrorist and a redhead? You can negotiate with a terrorist. 
So uh, what is the idea, what is the element that is described in this case, what is uh, the sentence saying, what is the statement, what is the assumption about red-haired people? They are crazy that uh, okay. you can't um, um, talk with them. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Okay, so it is impossible to have a regular, a normal communication with them, okay, because one of their traits in this case is described as to be crazy people, okay, ah, difficult to have interactions with, okay. Any other comments about this joke? Um, it is better to be a, a, to be a terrorist than a... a um... Uh, ginger hair. Yes, this is what the sentence implies. Mm. Okay, better a uh, terrorist than a, a person with red hair. Okay, so let's move to this idea. Elena, could you please read the first four lines for us? Uh, throughout history, red heads have been feared and revered, loathed and adored, degraded and exalted. No other single human trait has provoked such a dichotomy of emotions in such a large num number of fellow humans. Okay, so throughout history, redheads have been, and then we have a dichotomy, a binary system of positive and negative adjectives and verbs. For example, we have feared, that is negative, loathed, that is negative, uh, degraded, that is negative, and then we have the positive one, we have revered, adored, and exalted. So what is this text saying is that we usually tend to have a dichotomy of emotion towards these people. So for some people, this is the ideal. For some other people, they can only be considered as uh, outcast and excluded okay, from our community. Do you agree? Uh, uh, I was thinking about uh, um, Rosso Malpelo of yes. uh, Berga Nobel. So mm -hmm. he was uh, outcasted. Uh, yes, he is the, the best, uh, he is the quintessential of the typical uh, red hair boy who is completely excluded from the community, even in the workplace, because he is working in a mine. And the reason is because of the air, right? They, they can't accept the fact that he is a redhead and they consider this a negative trait. Okay, so this is history. And I want to read with you this. Uh, Cecilia, could you please read this uh, chapter for us? In modern day United Kingdom, the terms ginger or ginga are used to derogatorily describe red headed people, despite having one of the highest population, population of red heads, or perhaps because of it. This has given rise to terms such as ginger phobia, fear mm -hmm. of red heads, or gingerism, prejudice against. Red heads are sometimes dispersed with the mon monikers, mm -hmm. carrot tops, and carrot heads. Red hair children have been branded as offspring of unclean sex. Uh oh, we are back to the menstrual thing, which has gotten them towns like red knob or tampon tops. This intolerant attitude has led to a rise harassment that has caused families to relocate and has even led to murder. A 23-year-old redhead was stabbed in the back. Why? For being ginger, replied the miscreant that committed the full deed. Okay, so we have gingerphobia, fear of redhead, gingerism, prejudice against people. And what do we have here? Are you familiar with the word monikers? It's a general question. Do you know what is a monica? No, no, no. Okay, it is a nickname. In this case, ah. negative, okay? It is a, a way in which you call uh, other people names. So in school, this happened in school. I read an article from a school in Scotland where the teacher that was uh, like a person get, uh, got used completely to the fact that uh, around the students can be a uh, redhead. And she called this student carrot top, carrot head. And this makes me laugh because the carrot top is not orange, no? Yeah. <laughs> so kind of stupid nickname. It's and green. also, okay, not only uh, verbal and uh, bullying in this case, so verbal aggression and bullying, but also here, red haired children have been branded as 
offspring of unclean sex. Offsprings, do you know the meaning of offspring? No? Uh, any ideas? Something like that. The result of unclean sex. Yes, uh, result, so children coming from unclean sex. So uh, just imagine, and also towns mean uh, discriminate. So they have been discriminated with other nicknames, okay, red knob, tampon tops, okay. So we, we can imagine how aggressive this verbal language can be towards children, especially when they are teenager. And not only against teenagers, but also families had to relocate. So move from one place to another because the community was creating a lot of discrimination against them. And even finally, this climax okay, of aggression, murder. The reason okay, for stabbing in the back this uh, 20 year, uh, 23 years old uh, boy was just for being ginger. Stabbed in the back, what uh, does it mean? Stab, stab is when you use a knife and ah. you stab, you hit the ah, person. In this okay. case, stab in the neck, okay, in the back. Uh, pugnalato, alle, alle spalle, alla schiena. Okay. Okay? So uh, the reason why I put this information is because we are dealing with some pieces of art, some paintings, and we are just analyzing the ideal of women with red hair throughout history. Do you recognize any of these subjects? Yeah. Please. Okay, I think the first one is the simple one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's Brave, a uh, character of, of Disney. Yes. One of the Disney movie. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's Princess uh, Merida, I think. Yes. Merida. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And she is the princess of one of Scotland. the chief, yes, the chief of the clans of Scotland. And this uh, Disney animation has been revolutionary because she is one of the first princess who is not looking for a prince, but uh, who is looking for independence and self-realization. And again, this color of the hair, not only her, but also all the members of the royal family have uh, red hair. Okay, someone else? Do you Queen Elizabeth. Her? Queen Elizabeth the first, okay. Uh, do you know the name of this painting? This is one of the most important, most famous painting, but we have uh, a very large number of different paintings representing the Queen. Any ideas? No. This is called the Armada portrait because the Spanish Armada was the Spanish Navy, uh, Navy fleet who was fighting against the English. And here in the two windows, you can see the Spanish Armada, the Invincible Armada arriving. And then on the second window, you can see the English defeating and conquering uh, of course, defeating and winning over the Spanish Armada. So yes, she has the globe, she has a lot of jewels, and of course, this is the typical color of, of her hair. Anyone else? The um, fourth is Modigliani. Yeah, I mean, yes, yes I'm but Modigliani. I don't know the, the, the girl. Uh, this is one of the uh, famous paintings where he was representing his wife, Jeanne uh. Habitern, and uh, it is recognizable because of the eyes, right? Do you know why didn't he paint completely the eyes? No. Okay. No. She, 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 she can see. Uh, no, 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 no. She could see, so she didn't have any problems with the eyes. But Modigliani wanted to portray her eyes only in the moment in which he could learn and know in deep her soul. In fact, okay. the, the last paintings that he realized after many years of marriages, uh, we can see the pupils, we can see yeah. the defined eye, because of course he got to know the soul of the wife. Anyone else? These or these, the third and the... That, and the Dante, Dante W. Rossetti or something just like that. Yes, exactly. So this belongs to the famous brotherhood of the pre-Raphaelite. I pre mm -hmm. and as Margherita was saying, this is Dante Gabriel Rossetti, one of the uh, most important prominent figure of this. Okay, this is in Pompeii. So this is a fresco that you find in Pompeii. So it is going back okay, in history. Uh, just remember this figure, okay, the last one, because this will be crucial for our lesson. Okay, can I have, Margherita, could you please read 
some pieces of literature in which we have mentioned a protagonist, a character whose characteristic is having red hair. Number one. Okay. It is observed that the red eyes of both sexes are more libidinous and mischievous than the red, whom yet they much exceed in strength and activity. Okay, so Gulliver's travel, by Gulliver's travels, and what are the characteristics, according to him, of red head of both sexes? More libidinous and mischievous. Mischievous, uh, um, birbante, furfante. The yes, cosette. it is. It is a negative. Yes, it is a negative connotation, and it means trust. evil. Sorry. And trustful. You can trust. Yes. And yes. Dishonest. The kind of person you can't trust. And in this case, we have a reference to eroticism, to sexuality, and a reference to the fact that you never uh, trust these people, and also the exceeding strength and activity, meaning that uh, you can't. Uh, you can't predict, okay? They are unpredictable and they're always on the move. So Gulliver travels, okay, back in history. Let's go to the second one, Elenia, please. My brother, Ali, is dead now. He got leukemia and died when we wrapped in May on July the 18th, 1936. You'll have liked him. He was two years younger than I was, but he was about 50 times as intelligent he was terrifically intelligent. His teachers were always writing letters to my mother, telling her what a pleasure it was having a boy like Ali in their class. But it wasn't just that. He was the most intelligent member in the family. He was also the nicest in lots of ways. He never got mad at anybody. People with red hair are supposed to get mad very easily, but Ali never did. He had very red hair. Okay, so do you know uh, this novel? This is one of the most important American pieces of literature, The Catcher in the Rye. Right. Yeah. No. What is the translation? Uh, it's a famous, it's a famous book, even in Italy. I don't know if you know it by the Italian version. Giovanni Olden. Mm -hmm. uh, this book let's let's connect this book to the uh, last week's lesson do you remember we spoke about banned books okay so prohibited books for example this is a book that in american school uh teachers tend to avoid okay they don't want to have the reading of this book because it has a very sexual connotation and content so for some people some teachers is better not to have the adolescents okay, reading these books. Okay, um, so again, negative description and prejudice over red hair people, but then saying like the surprise of he was very red hair, despite that he was intelligent and also one of the nicest of the school. Okay, let's move to the third one, Lara, please. <clears throat> okay. I've had years of teasing about my red hair, but I definitely think it toughened me up. If you are ginger, you end up pretty quick-witted. Okay, so this is Ed Sheeran, okay, so very famous for his air. Uh, are you familiar with these verbs, the verbs I've highlighted? Yes. Toughened. Toughened. Rafforzato. Rafforzato. Yes, because... Because tough, the adjective means strong, okay? So the fact of being red hair has given me more strength. And then if you are ginger, you end up pretty quick-witted. Quick-witted? Intelligent. Yes, because if you are wit, you are very intelligent, okay? So uh, if you are ginger, you end up being pretty quick-witted, okay? So he was kind of ironic about the fact of being red. Uh, do you know any other famous celebrities, famous fictional characters who are red? Woody Allen. Okay. In literature? In general. So thinking about fashion, thinking about music, film industry, uh, fictional characters in books. Uh, have you got any ideas of people with red hair? Anna dai Capelli Rossi. Okay, yes, this is very famous. Difficult to say, people paint their hair, mostly. Yes, I agree, I agree. And Joe March was uh, red-haired, okay. or not? Yes, and 
Yes, and she has a, a, a very uh, particular personality, right? So sometimes we can derive special traits of her personality thanks also to the physical appearance. Anyone else? Fiorella Manon. Prince Harry. Okay, Prince Harry, yes. Okay, so a very famous celebrity. Milva. Okay. La Pantera di Goro. Okay, so we have a lot of characters and I'm sure that if we read an interview, we will find for sure uh, a lot of references to the fact how difficult it was for them to go through the acceptance by the community due to the hair. Okay, so um, you can go deep and find information. So this is... Oh yes, we have we have a lot of of different characters, and when we start thinking about them, a, a lot of names okay come to our mind. Okay, so again, I've uh, left here for you the link, so you can go and read this story. And as you can see here, this is the tragedy of one of the greatest supermodels yeah. okay of the past. So this is Elizabeth Sido. And as you can see here, she was the muse, the inspiration to this group of uh, pre-Raphaelite, so this group of painters, and they found super interesting the fact that this woman had this pale complexion, perfect okay, face, perfect skin, and they were attracted by the color of the air. So they were uh, living together. So it was a group of different painters living, cohabiting together. And they all, the boys, fell in love with Elizabeth. And at that time, the promiscuous relations were quite accepted. So she was having different relations okay, with all the members of this brotherhood. Uh, do you know the name of this uh, famous painting? Ophelia. Ophelia. Yeah, yeah, Sophia. So it comes from the important protagonist of Hamlet by Shakespeare. And this is the moment in which Ophelia is drowning herself because, of course, of the tragedy of not uh, being loved back by Hamlet. So this is uh, interesting because there's a story behind the painting. In fact, in order to have the most realistic pose, the uh, painter decided to put the model Elizabeth inside a bath and left her there for many hours in order to have the correct uh, detail of the wet air and also the face turning pale. So it was quite interesting, okay, the, the history behind this painting. How do you know the painting? Can you tell me any background or feedbacks about this painting? Have you seen it? Do you know the story? Yes, I like so much these paintings and this period because um, I like uh, this um, magic world, but uh, also um, there are some symbols uh, and, um, and also these uh, painters uh, looked at uh, the past, at the Renaissance, and um, I think it is, they are very elegant. Uh, and I like so much the women that they painting. Okay, so uh, yes, I agree with you. It looks like we were in a different period, in a sort of harmony, utopian world, okay, where all the details are perfect, balanced, and the beauty is openly, okay, it is impossible, it is so objective that it is impossible to say something different. Okay, um, it is interesting to mention that Elizabeth Sido was having a relation with uh, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, that is the, uh, the painter okay, of the majority of these paintings. Uh, then, do you know Oscar Wilde? We have already discussed about Oscar Wilde. Yes. Yeah, in the picture yeah. of Dorian Gray, yeah. Dorian falls in love with a girl. Do you remember her name? Mm. No, I don't remember. No, I don't remember. Sibyl, Sibyl Vane. This is the name of yeah. the actress. And Oscar Wilde named that act actress after Elizabeth Acido. So when he wrote the picture of Dorian Gray, he wrote that he had in mind this lady because he was uh, in, 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 total, uh, in total attracted by this lady. So she was influencing okay, not only the painters, but also the artists of that time. Okay, so if you're correct. The rose, 
Please. Sorry. The Rose, um, a documentary in Sky Arte about mm -hmm. uh, this young lady mm -hmm. and about her um, tragic life and death. Okay. Yes, <laughs> tragic life and death. And um, also about uh, the, um, the painter. Yes. Because, because it, it, yeah, it yeah. Super because particular. after her death, he, he tried to put a book into her coffin. Mm -hmm. Or something. Yes. Yeah. He was crazy. He was crazy yeah. and madly in love with her. Yeah. And as it always happens, the strongest is uh, the relation with your partner. Then the most difficult you find okay, uh, to recover and to find. Because I think he decided to marry her. Uh, at the end, only at the end, when he was very sick. Yes. So when uh, she died, he went crazy mm -hmm. and tried to open the coffee and put a book inside it. I yes, think I remember. A, yes, because it was a very unhealthy relation, okay? so upside down, and it was very difficult to cope with yeah. the fact that she was working and posing for different other painters, okay? so jealousy and... Uh, the inability of relying, of trusting uh, this woman. So it was very difficult. Mm. So why am I speaking about that? Because you will find links and connections among everything we will be dealing uh, to, with today. So this is the Rossetti's family. As you can see, we have four siblings. What do you notice? Just by looking at the pictures, what... Uh, catches your eye, what catches your attention? The very old uh, picture. Okay, old picture. We have two brothers and two sisters. Oh, two brothers and two sisters. Okay, two brothers and two sisters. And then I'm showing you here. Uh, do you see my screen now? I'm Googling something. No, no. no. Okay, I have to change for a second. Now? No. Yes. yes. Okay, yes, yes. so this is the family. So uh, Gabriele Rossetti is the father. Uh, he was Italian, he moved uh, to, to London and there he was teacher and professor teaching Dante okay, at university. So you can imagine that having a father who was so well read and educated gave a lot of inputs and influenced a lot the life and the uh, education of, of, the four, of the four brothers. So we have the first one and she was not as famous as the other. We have Dante Gabriele Rossetti. I told you, okay, he is uh, the, the painter and he is the revolutionary of the family. And then we have William, again, he was another artist uh, in the family, and uh, he was uh, too belonging to the brotherhood, okay, to the group of painters. But I want to focus on Christina. Christina is uh, the, uh, the youngest of the, of the four, and she was always suffering for health uh, problems, okay? So she was weak, and she was always trying to find consolation in religion. And she became a very famous poet. What I like about this family is that you can still read the correspondence, so letters exchange between Dante and Christina. And Dante was very supportive with, uh, with this sister. That is very atypical in this moment. So just take a look at the date. So women writing, do you remember we discussed about how, how yes. difficult it was for a woman at that time to leave out of a passion, out of a hobby. So Dante was always supporting the sister. Come on, you can do better. You can have your writings published. So he was uh, uh, very appreciating uh, the sister and trying to support her. So have you ever heard of uh, Cristina Rossetti? Because uh, I'm always sad about the fact that she is not so famous as other writers. Do you know something about Cristina? No. No. Anything? Anything. Anything. Okay. Um, then we have this group of four. So two of them, Dante and uh, Cristina, were called the, and this is 
very funny. They were these storms, okay, because they were always okay, bubbling and uh, enthusiastic about everything. The other two were called the lakes. What happens to the lake? Why do you think that uh, this nickname was given to the two? Lakes, lake, lakes. like a lake. Yes, lakes. Because they were flat. Yes. <laughs> yes. Calm. Okay, calm. 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 Okay. calm. Yes. Yes, and on the opposite, the other two were the storms of the family, and they were very prolific in writing. So just remember this, okay? So remember the relation between Christina and he and her brother. Just remember the fact that the brother was living a very tormented relation. And remember also that she was surrounded by painters, by artists. So the contamination, the artistic contamination that is happening on this lady is of course influencing also her way of writing, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is her. Could you please describe this picture? What can you see in the picture? A painter okay. and a, a model. Okay, so what is happening in the scene? What is the painter doing? Is is um, painter the, the, the girl? He is painting the girl, okay. Uh -huh. What else? Could you focus it's on different details? Uh, this is a typical um, eight, uh, 18th century studio okay. of painter. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you base your evidence on? Um, because uh, how the model is, uh, is uh, um, sitting? Yes, the, mm -hmm. the position, the okay. the the um, yes, the, pose. yes, the pose, the attitude, yes, the ways in which she uh, uh, uses the hands, okay, just uh, cuddling the knee, okay, Francesca, what else? Uh, this is a typical study, uh, studio because uh, there are a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It's it can be also a bedroom. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I think um, it is a, an artist studio, studio mm -hmm. and um, is um, uh, more or less oriental. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you have some elements that belong to a different culture. But yes. it's, it is it is too too much too tidy because okay. uh, I imagine an artist studio with colors and. Uh, um, si dice, uh, quadri and uh, water and here is all so tidy and perfect mm -hmm. and uh, ah, do you think that there is a gloomy or dark atmosphere because it is not a bright room do you agree with me it's not a bright room mm -hmm. and usually yeah. when we think yes. of the studio we imagine like a, a very lively place bright and with no particular elements of furniture, very spacious. What do you think? How do you imagine the artist studio? In your yes, it's, it's very different, but in this period, in this artistic period, is um, a particular way to paint uh, mm -hmm. uh, an artist studio. And there are a lot of elements that remain to um, a particular atmosphere. As okay. I said, uh, the oriental things, uh, uh, for example, the um, paint, uh, the, 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 the animal. The carpet. Yes, the tiger. With the tiger. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, and also the also shapes the... of the vases, for example. This yes. is typical of a yes. different yes. culture. Yeah, so as you know, the context, you can easily recognize that this belongs to a particular period and yeah. there is no surprise okay, in the uh, furniture inside the room. But of course, it is atypical. We have, for example, here armors, shields, weapons okay, hanging on the walls. Then we have typical music instruments here. And even the chest of drawers belongs to a particular period. And yes, all the elements okay, create a kind of disoriented sensation, right? You're, you're quite lost. You don't, you don't find the perfect balance between the among the elements, but uh, if you know the context, then uh, everything is easily explained. Okay, so we have the painter. He is painting this lady. 
what can you say about the relation between the two? If my question were, how do you feel about the relation between the painter and the lady? What can you say about that? Perhaps she is uh, a little bit uh, impaurita. Um, ah, okay. She seems scared. She seems scared. scared. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, not so comfortable. Okay, perfect. So o you awkward. Oh. Ah, okay. So it's an awkward situation. Is mm. it because of the eyes, Elena? You're, you're uh, the, the position the of the the shoulder and uh, okay. I. I Perhaps okay. I don't see very well, but... Uh... Okay, so you consider her uh, uncomfortable mm. in the posing. Okay, cool. I, I like it. What about the other impressions? Because I like art, because you can always give a personal impression. What about you? What do you think? For me, she was embarrassed. Embarrassed, okay. So she feels embarrassed. And... Uh, her, her eyes... Uh... Uh, so uh, at, uh, at the, the... Are, are looking at the floor. Yes. Okay, cool. So you find the fact that there is no eye contact and maybe yes. the lack of eye contact can be a reference, a symbol, an evidence of feeling embarrassed. Okay, cool. What about the others? Can you share your impressions? Well, I think uh, she's not embarrassed, but she is tired for the, uh, because for the position long okay. times. Uh, yes. I like, I like all your evidence because this is very helpful for the next slide. So you find she is tired, exhausted, because we never think about that because we always concentrate our attention on uh, the talent of the painter who must be focusing on the pose, on what he is doing. But also being a model can be tiring, right? It is a difficult job. You always have to stay in the exact position and every kind of moves you can do can have negative impact on the result. Yes. Okay, what about the painter? Does he look concentrated? Does he look interested in the lady? Yes. Concentrate? Too much. Yes. Too much? Who was speaking? Sorry, I didn't recognize yes. the voice. Uh, Francesca. Okay. Uh, for me, it's uh, too much perfect. Mm. Uh, um, I think about a painter, but if I think about a painter, I think about uh, um, um, a not perfect person, but uh, with dirty clothes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, more natural, with, uh, more natural. Hands. Yes, more natural, yes. Yes, he is wearing this is the it. smart clothes. Yes, this okay. isn't natural for me. Okay, unnatural. Too much elegant. Okay, yes, too, too, too elegant. elegant okay, to be a painter. It mm. looks like the structure of the painting has so many details and it is losing the naturality that should be the yeah. spontaneity that should be considered and linked to art. Okay, Ilenia, what about you? Any impressions? Hold um, on. <laughs> All of the elements uh, are like a set. Okay. It looks like a set. Okay, I like this word. Ilenia, please. Uh, for me, it's completely different from, from what I think when I think about uh, a studio. Okay. Because uh, I think it's too much rich. The Full painter, of details. Full of, yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, me, maybe it's a prejudice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's a prejudice, but when I think about a studio, I think uh, about something less rich, less mm -hmm. elegant, mm -hmm. uh, maybe dirty. Um, and Minimal. Minimal. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. This is so, the idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, 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 I'm, it's a prejudice of mm -hmm. mine. I, I don't know. Yes, we, we always have expectations, right? Yeah. Sometimes uh, reality is different or sometimes we exactly understand. And maybe and maybe because, because I when I think about painters, I think about uh, uh, these um, poor guys who um, don't have money. Yes. So <laughs> they are they are trying to struggle yeah. with their dreams and yeah. achieving something. Okay. Poor people. Okay. Margarita? Oh, it's difficult to say. I, I noticed that all the light points to the girl. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that she is put in, in, in first line. Yes, so you can say that she is under the spotlight. Spotlight, okay, so to yes. use story. Mm -hmm. We don't understand where the light comes from. Mm -hmm. it, it's not clear, just like, for example, something a very different caravan, where you can see the light coming from somewhere else. The real, the real you're analyzing. Yeah. We don't understand where what comes from. Okay, so what am I understanding from your assumption is that we don't have exactly what is the message. We don't get who is the most important figure. We don't get what's the, uh, what's the atmosphere there because you are missing some techniques. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. okay. So the reason why I put this image is because Cristina Rossetti wrote a short poem and the title of this poem is In an Artist's Studio. This is the title, okay? So I try to find an image that could be different or could be similar to the description of the poem. And this is a challenge, right? Because when uh, in a few seconds we will be reading the poem, at the end you will tell me this is completely different from my expectations or this is a good picture that may represent the poems. So let's go here. This is the poem. I've highlighted some uh, words for you and created some keywords on this side. Uh, can I have a reader for the first quatrain? Any volunteers for the first quatrain? Elena, you go. One face looks out from all his canvases. One self same figure sits on walks or leans. We, we found her hidden just behind those screens that mirror gave back all her loveliness. Okay. So we have one face looks out from all his canvases. So what is his canvases, Elena? E canvases sono le tele, i canovacci. Yes, exactly. And his referred to? Uh, the, the painter. Okay, so we don't have the word painter, right? But as the title is in an artist's studio, we know that the artist is a male painter and he has canvases all around the room, okay? What is typical, what is in common among all these canvases is one face. So that one face looks out from all his canvases. So Elena, what are we understanding? That there is only one subject, right? And the painter is repeating, repeating, and over-repeating the representation ah, of a single, the same, the a same. single face, okay? Yes. So a single face is the subject of all his canvases. Uh -huh. So just by that, do you think is, does it look like a sort of obsession? And upset, yes. Yes, do you agree with me? He is obsessed yes. by, by, the, by that girl. Okay, do we have the word girl? Do we have any references to a girl? No. A woman? No. 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 No, right? Her loveliness. Her yes. hidden. Yes, we have only an adjective, a possessive adjective, her. But her. we never have any specific details no. for the woman. She is a face in orange. She mm -hmm. is a self-same same. figure. Okay. Self-same, what does it mean? Always identical. The, uh, the same. Self same okay. okay. But so, he says we found her hidden. Yes, in fact, the only reference is her. Her and her loveliness. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the only, uh, we, we found her, but we don't have explicit references to the fact that she is a person. Oh. So it is a face, it is a figure, and how is she portrayed? Sitting, walking, leaning, leaning, okay? So in different positions, but always the same subject. And we found her hidden just behind those screens. So she is in the room, but she is hidden by all those screens. So this is the image, right? The painter is painting. There are all different paintings hanging on the walls. And there is the woman who is in a specific place we don't know in front of the painter, okay? okay. In yellow, we have a reference to sight. So the sight, okay, the gaze, the eyes are really important. 
So looks out, screens, and mirror. The mirror gave back her loveliness. Okay, let's go to the second quatrain. Any other volunteers reading? Be brave. <laughs> If you want. Francesca, please. A queen in opal or in a ruby dress, a nameless girl in fresh summer greens, a saint, an angel, every canvas means the same one meaning, neither more or less. Okay, now she is described as a queen, a nameless girl. It is important, right, not giving a name to the girl. She, yes. she is not worth a name. She is a nameless girl, but she is a queen. She is a saint. She is an angel. Despite the fact that in all the different paintings, she appears in a completely different uh, role, she is the same one meaning. Nothing more, nothing less. What is your impression about this second quatrain? What is, Christine? Any ideas? The loneliness. Okay. So you can portrait uh, Margherita. Idealization. Yes, okay. very good. Idealization. Not yes. a real woman. Yes, it's, she is not a real woman. In fact, she is in front of the painter, but he doesn't care about her. He has something in his mind. He has an, an, an ideal image on his mind, and he is only adding details. So he's adding a colorful dress. He is representing her while she is walking in the fresh air, okay, outside in the grass. She looks like an angel. She looks like a saint. What can you say about this representation of women, women as saints and women as angels? Do you like it? That they are not real. Okay, they are not real, first mm -hmm. of all. And also... And I think it's Uh, it's a way to represent a woman um, that uh, doesn't have, doesn't um, do any harm. Okay. Like he, harmless. She's, not, she's harmless, yes. Mm -hmm. Tatila, what do you think about these two quatrains? That, um, I mean, it's, um, I have in my mind the image you uh show before so it's mm -hmm. very difficult to not think of that image. okay so that, that image picture. is influencing yes. your fantasy yes so you can't portray anything different <laughs> okay do you think it is good is it negative so just from these uh, two first quatrains is it a good representation it is a good uh, connotation of the painter or christina rossetti is trying to say something negative about the painter Um, I think in the end might may, may be negative. Okay, yes. Let's go to the uh, blue word. He feeds upon her face by day and night. What about this verb, feed? Feed means to give food, right? Mm -hmm. So he feeds upon her face by day and night. How would you interpret this line? Si ciba di lei notte e giorno. Ah. Like a vampire. Margherita? Just like a vampire. <laughs> a vampire, yes. A sort of cannibal, right, who is eating and devouring the, the person model. he has in, yes, the model. So what are we understanding? That maybe the word obsession yes. was correct, right? Yes. So he is so obsessed that he is taking energy out of the girl. He is stealing life. He is uh, nurturing himself through the lady. And this is unbalanced, right? When the painter takes everything but doesn't give anything in exchange, this is an unbalanced relation. Do you agree with me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Maybe, yes. Yes, tell me. Maybe because the purpose of Christina, of her book, is... Um, to put the evidence that the artist and the painter is important, not the model. Mm -hmm. So even in this case, that woman is not considered by the society and even mm -hmm. by the painters mm -hmm. yes. because they use mm -hmm. them, but they don't care of them. Yes, in fact, the only purpose of 
painters, not in general, so we're yeah. just speaking in general, but it's not always like that. But in this case, the purpose of the painter is to reach his own ambitions, yeah. right? And in this case, the woman is only a vehicle to be used in order to reach that specific target. And in fact, he feeds upon her face day and night. Lucilla, this is the reason why the, paint, the model is tired because he yes. has been posing day and night. Okay? But uh, maybe uh, the artist loves uh, not the models, but uh, uh, his own... Um, uh, his own painting. Yes, and it is always like that. What is more important? Is it reality? Is it appearance? Are we in love with our dreams? Are we in love with the ideal figure we have? Okay. She doesn't and, care about the, mod, the, the girl, the model. Yes, totally, totally. Uh. And what is the reaction of the lady, Sara? And she? And she, with the, with the true kind eyes, looks back on him fair as moon and joyful as the light, not one when waiting, not with sorrow dim. Okay, so again, yellow, the eyes of the girl are described as true and kind. So the painter is not seeing her, mm -hmm. he can't see her. On the opposite, she is staring at him. The eyes of the model are true and kind and she is having a contact okay, directly with the painter. And she appears fair as the moon, chiara, okay, come la luna, dolce, sweet as the moon, joyful as the light. So she looks like an innocent creature. She uh, appears completely unaware of what is happening, right? Humble and kind of quiet in front of the painter. And of course, thanks to this, she is given immortality. So the painter can give immortality to the lady thanks to the painting. Okay, and this is always what happens with art in general. Uh, a sonnet or a painting can give immortality. And then let's go to the final couplet that is where is the most important message. Ilenia? Not as she is, but was one hope uh, shown bright, mm -hmm. not as she is, but as she feels his dream. So the uh, final couplet is telling he is not painting the real model. He is painting the ideal. He is painting the image he has of the lady. So the reality is revealed. Again, there is an unstable, unfair relation between the two. So this is what you were saying, right? Objectification of the world, of the woman. She is an object to be used. Then second, can we speak about the appearance and the reality? Sometimes love is completely different okay, from our perception and what is the reality. So what do you think about this poem? What can we learn from Cristina Rossetti and her vision of women? How are women described in this poem? Strong women? Rebellious no. women, perhaps no. uh, she wanted no. to rebel to this uh, image of the woman in this period, but yes. uh, she couldn't, and so she tried with uh, his poetry to express his feelings. Yes, her because, feel her feelings. Uh, the, the, yes, the, the woman doesn't appear like a victim because she stares at the painter with true kind eyes, so she is brave. Okay, she's not like the painting I showed you before. She is just maintaining and keeping uh, an eye contact with the painter. So in a sort of way, uh, at the beginning appears to be so humble and quiet and uh, impossible to, to show the feelings. But in reality, the sensation is completely different. Do you like the poem? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like provocation yes yes i like this so it's I a provocative message and it is it has a turning point because you didn't expect that and then plot twist the you are surprised by the by the final one and in fact this is how you can analyze it so the male artist desire is objectify reinvent the female subject in his art this is a kind of objectification of the lady or you can also describe the lady as the model 
is made to dress up and pose as all sorts of different women, exotic queen, descend, the angel, in order to fulfill the male fantasy of women as pure saints and virginal angels, sensual, seductive queens. What do you think about this imagery? Is it typical, right? Women yes. are always devil or angels. Yes. They are good, they are bad. Yes. We don't have shades, right? No. Yeah. Yeah, they're not real women. Yes, they are not real, right? They're Think not. about also Dolce Steel novel, this typical stereotype mm -hmm. of women, okay, uh, with blonde hair and blue eyes, completely innocent, completely perfect, okay? So it is still difficult nowadays to go and drift apart from this stereotype. Okay. Yes, because when you see specific images yes. in, in TV, women appear to be like a perfect idealized figure or on the opposite temptations okay, and evil figures. What do you think? Yes, it's true. I was thinking about dolls as well, like mm -hmm. Barbie. Barbies. Mm -hmm. for, um, uh, for a lot of years, Barbie has been just uh, these uh, perfect images, blonde girl with the blue eyes, mm -hmm. long legs. Long mm -hmm. legs, yes. Perfect body. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's is changing this uh, habit uh, because you can find all types of dolls with um, uh, different kind of um, color of mm, the skin. Yeah. But uh, for a long, for a long time, it was like that. The these stereotypes, even uh, for the children, for the kids, for the yes. Children. And Cristina Rossetti is writing in that precise century, and she is speaking about something that is still valid nowadays because we can mm -hmm. find again uh, merely a passive object on which the artist projects his fantasies and dreams, okay? The, the men's need to possess, control the way women are represented and how women should be. This sounds contemporary, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. And I would like to uh, take a look at this. Do you know Edgar Allan Poe? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Have you ever read The Oval Portrait? No, yes, but I don't me. remember. I read it, but you read it, but you don't remember. It remember. is a short story. Yes. It is two pages, so you can read. Uh, you can read it easily. And there, there are so many similarities between Artisina <coughs> Rossetti and artist to the over portrait that they must be highlighted. As you can see in the picture, we have again a painter, a model. In uh, in this moment, in the over portrait, they are married. Okay, so the husband and the wife. Ah. And uh, she is posing for him, and she is standing inside a building of the house, a room of the house. It is so humid that uh, as the days pass, she is feeling every time weaker and weaker, and she gets ill, okay? And she doesn't reveal this to the husband, and the husband is looking at her because he must find all the details to portray her, but he can't notice the color of the skin. He can't notice all the signals that may represent what is happening to the wife. And then when he finally completes the portrait, he goes, oh, this is life. I've painted life. He looks so realistic. And then he looks at the wife and she's dead. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> yeah, so let's read this passage that I was uh, describing to you. Can I have volunteers? I've put into the brackets, okay, some synonyms, okay, so you don't need the translation of the words. Anyone? Uh, I read... Uh, Elena. Some. And B was a passionate and wild, crazy and moody man who ah. became lost in reveries. Ma qual è il verbo? And B I was... think that B is he. Eh? Yes, yes, he was, he was. Ah, he, he was okay. was a passionate, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. He was a passionate. <laughs> and, okay. So that he would not see that a light which fell so ghastly in that lone turret withered the health and the spirits of his bride, who pined visibly to all but him. Okay, so uh, what are the characteristics of uh, this, uh, this man, the painter? Passionate wild, moody, 
and he became lost in reveries, in fantasies, right? The fantasy of becoming famous, of becoming successful. And for this reason, he didn't see, he didn't notice that the elf and the spirit of the bride were suffering, okay? Typical of male. <laughs> yes, we don't notice. <laughs> we don't see. Okay, we, let's move on. We notice when our men are sick, but they don't notice when we are sick. <laughs> they, they don't notice when we go to the hairdresser, so not surprising. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Elena, yet? Uh, me? Yes, yet, yes, yet, she uh, yet she smiles on and still on uncomplainingly because uh, she saw the painter took a fervid and burning pleasure in his task and wrought day and night to depict her who loved so him, yet uh, who grew daily more dispirited and weak. Okay, so uh, she smiled uncomplainingly okay so she is completely different from the uh, girl in the artist studio because in this case we can see that she doesn't take action she stays there because of the fact that she recognizes the fervid and burning pleasure of the husband so this is a sort of sacrifice mm. she, so she, she stays there okay uh, passively she doesn't take any actions okay and then, if we go on, he would not see that the tints which he spread upon the canvas were drawn from the cheeks of her who sat beside him. Tints, so the colors that he was spreading on the canvas were taken from the cheeks of the, of the bride. So um, this is Gothic novel, okay? So Edgar Allan Poe wrote about a Gothic novel. So there's a sort of magic in which all the colors taken uh, from the lady are put inside the painting, okay? Many weeks had passed and little remained to do, save one brush upon the mouth, one teeth upon the eye. The spirit of the lady again flickered up as the flame within the socket of the lamp. So day by day, he is about to complete the work and she is about to die. And the painter stood entrance before the work which had wrought, but in the next, while he yet gazed, he grew tremulous, very pallid and aghast, and crying with a loud voice, this is indeed life itself, turned suddenly to regard his beloved, she was dead. Terrible. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is very similar, okay, it is a terrible ending, but again the relation uh, is between two people, there is love, there is sacrifice, there is passion, and of course, uh, the message is completely different, but I invite you to read this oval portrait because it's quite interesting. Let's finish with contemporary society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is, the uh, <laughs> yes, this is the commercial of shoes. What do you think about that? You can choose the pair of, of shoes you prefer, just inserting a coin. Oh and God. notice the detail here, served chilled. Sono servite fresche. Mm. Terrible. Young. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. It's a lucky day. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so this is about betting. Okay. So this is a service offered to the, to the market. And of course, if you can read this, it's your lucky day. So if you want it to be your lucky day, call us and have an agreement. Okay, let's make a deal. What about this? It'll blow your mind away. Oh, okay. so it's a joke. 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 Yes. It's uh, related to blow job. Blow job. Yes, yeah. blow job. It's a sexual action. Yes, of course. Yes. So ah. it tastes better. Blow job è un latte. Abbiamo capito. So I uh, it blow your mind away. So they are using this word and they're putting the image and the shape of this 
uh, sandwich in order to remind the fact that it just tastes better. Uh, there is a spot of a car these days on the radio, and I, I, I don't remember the, 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 the car, the type of the car, but they say, um, we, they don't say women, but they speak about uh, high heels, Mm -hmm. six centimeters high heels and they describe a women and they speak about car okay okay it's terrible yes this is not a surprising this is not shocking happening every day in the society marketing makes a, a high usage of images and innuendos with women and the last one is this one nothing free about the bag pop chips in this case, there was a very strong criticism because of the surgery a lot of women have to go through for a cancer, breast cancers. Mm -hmm. So the idea of referring to boobs as fake boobs, not considering the fact that sometimes you, you are forced okay, to take mm -hmm. up a surgery. So there was a lot of criticism and rebellion uh, from this group of, of women. They were... Uh, completely shocked okay, by the usage of this. For some people, this is ironic, so we don't have to take it so seriously. I, I think it depends on the uh, range and the spectrum of experiences and uh, sensitiveness that uh, each individual has. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that? What do you think about Cristina Rossetti? What do you think about this objectification of women? Can we do something? Do we only have to accept it? Can we change society? Can we do something? But for example, one thing that you can do is not uh, at, at, at least the simple one is not not to buy these uh, type of products uh, that they um, boycott. Yes. Boycotting, yes, boycotting, yeah, boycotting cutting. Cutting. product, you know, because I don't yeah. like uh, this kind of marketing at all. So mm -hmm. I don't okay, want so to one buy of the it. decision you can make is not buying the product, so sending a strong message okay, to the company. So you will lose a lot of profits because of your wrong marketing campaign, just to cope with that. Okay, any other impressions? But, but I think that in Italy, <coughs> the authority of com, uh, can, doesn't uh, allow to, to do some uh, so spudorate. Um, no, no, they do not. And... Beh, ma così evidenti, no. Uh, if I'm not wrong, there was a campaign, Francesca, help me, because it is about fashion. There was the campaign, was it Dolce Gabbana? With Ray, uh, there was this photo of a woman, and it, uh, she looks like she was about to be raped by, uh, by models. Mm. Yeah, it was in China, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Ah, quella del, dei cinesi del, che mangiavano il sushi, cos'è che erano? Yes, it was something in China that eh. went against uh, the culture and it was accused, ah. the brand was accused of ah, 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 uh, I racism and something like that. But also, you have a lot of perfumes for women and for men in which the lady is depicted as, I don't know, standing on the floor, kneeling down. So a lot of innuendos, even with the poses and gestures. I don't know if you have ever seen uh, pictures like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> so it is. You, uh, I think uh, what, uh, today we sometimes we we can thank we can say thank you to social media because uh, there are a lot of people who stand up against this kind of um, commercials or billboards you can find uh, on the streets. So um, thanks to, for example, Facebook, uh, some billboards are taken away. Yes, they are removed. They are, oh, removed. They are removed because uh, they are uh, so sexual <laughs> about the sexual link between women and cars or women and something else so today we we sometimes we we can say thank you to this book yes also i was thinking about uh the commercial where you have giovanna she is a maid working inside a house yeah she was painting, painting and doing yes. some housework and the idea was she was wearing a very short skirt 
and the man, the, uh, the owner of the house was totally distracted by her. So there was a sexual reference even to that TV commercial. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Vi ringrazio, spero che siano stati tre laboratori. Bellissimo. Bellissimi. Bellissimi. <ride> Scusate, mi è venuta anche la tosse perché ho il riscaldamento attaccato. E spero di rivedervi, no, spero sì. di rivedervi nei, nei, prossimi, nei prossimi laboratori. Cercheremo di farne il più possibile per, per tenerci in contatto eh. anche a distanza. Grazie. Chissà che si Grazie. riesca a farli anche in presenza, ah, Gloria. Sì. Stiamo sperando, eh, però intanto è un arancione, quindi vediamo. Eh, lo so, lo so. Lo so, spesa. Ok. Però sì, grazie, è stato grazie, molto, bellissimo, molto bello. Grazie, bellissimo, bellissimo. In particolare, bellissimo. Vi mando, vi mando, vi mando le, le slide come l'altra volta, così sì. ve le potete anche guardare, guardare personalmente. Grazie, ah, Gloria. Grazie, Gloria. Thank you very much. Bye. Ciao. Have a nice <ride> weekend. Bye bye, have a nice weekend. Ciao a tutti. Ciao. 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 Ciao, ciao Cinzia, ciao, ciao, tutti. ciao, ciao Francesca, ciao. tutte quante, ciao, ciao Sara, Margherita. Sara, ciao e tutte le altre. Oh.